If you want to make it big in global business, you're probably either already in China or planning your way in. But the path to success there is hardly a sure thing, as some firms have discovered to their detriment. Private equity fund Sinven capitalizes on that. It buys strictly European companies, but increasingly factors in a target's unrealized China potential before taking out its checkbook. High-profile purchases include Avio, an Italian aeronautics firm that expanded into the mainland before it was sold on to GE, and Pizza Express operator Gondola, now gaining traction in China and reportedly on the sales block. Those expansions were in part overseen by Sinven operating partner Joseph Wan, based here in Hong Kong. I asked him what his secret was to successfully taking a company into China. Uh, not every single business has the right to succeed in China, and not any management team is prepared for China. And I think uh, for us, um, our model enables us to be very selective in picking the portfolio companies that have those two elements and leave others uh, that do not. I think number two is uh, to be realistic. Uh, I've come across many man managers who are either too ambitious with China and thinks that they can conquer the country in a day, uh, or they tend to be too cautious and don't want to venture out of their home market. Um, I think what one needs to do as best practice is really to invest in the time to uh, set the right expectations. And in order to do that, you have to find the right facts on the table. And that's not easy in China, um, you know, especially for companies that are setting a foot in China for the first time. Is there still some low-hanging fruit in China from your perspective? I think low-hanging fruits are increasingly more difficult to come by. Um, I mean, China is a great market, lots of opportunities, but let's not forget that it's also a market that is almost the most competitive uh, in the world. Um, it has changing regulations, as we talked about, and uh, the geographical scope of the market is tremendous. You know, 10 years ago, you, when you talk about the China market opportunity, it's only two, three markets in T1 cities. Now you're talking about hundreds. And each one of them have very different characteristics. So I don't know. Uh, low hanging fruits are increasingly hard to come by for sure. As a PE fund, is it easier to fix an existing portfolio company's China assets or start from scratch? It's hard to compare which one is harder, but you know, it certainly requires a, a certain set of muscles. So in helping our companies um, start anew in China, we do quite a bit of um, work beforehand to prepare management. So usually we do quite a bit of research on the ground to understand the landscape, competition, potential partners, opportunities and threats. And we would then bring management over for immersion. Uh, and then we would have a go, no go. And then we would actually then start to think about uh, potential partners. And the process would, you know, repeat itself. When we first started with our business partner, who's the franchisee, um, we started with a very European menu. And at that time, 80% of the customers were foreigners, expats. So that worked fine. But of course, at that point, we wanted to attract uh, local customers. And we tried to um, tweak the menu. We added compo chicken pizza. Beijing duck pizza. Actually, that is still there. Beijing duck pizza. It's a, it's a, a very good seller. Uh, but we tried to tweak the menu to add local flavors. <clears throat> uh, we thought that would attract local customers. But the local customers hated that. Um, so what we heard later from local customers is that you know, what they wanted is an authentic experience. So we went back to the original menu with smaller tweaks. And now we have Quite the reverse, we have 80% domestic customers and 20% expats. So as I said, we've gone full circles on that.